I'm a channeler. You know what I'm saying? I'm I tap into the higher frequencies and they channel through me into this world. Straight up, you know what I mean? And it happens because I allow it to happen. I accept it to happen. I am aware of it happening. I'm just connected on, you know, a higher level, on a divine level. <laughs> Just the way this, the, the, the instruments were sounding, I was like, yo, Kirk, you got to give me these type of drums, like the juicy joints. I was like, you got to do it something like, don't sample nothing, but just do it like this type of feel, you know what I'm saying? Can't change the world unless we change ourselves. Die from the sicknesses if we don't seek the health. All eyes be my witness when I speak was felt. Full house on my hands, the cars I was dealt. Three Ks, two A's in America. I'm just a black space spawned out the nebula. I put the three Ks in America, you know what I mean? You know what that's for, the, you know, the super corrupted side of the country. A kid came up to me, like this really small kid, he was probably seven, eight. And he's like, Joey, I heard your new song, three Ks, two A's in America. And that shit just keeps replaying in my head, like, wow, like that kid is gonna forever, like just grow up and know that America because of me. And everything I do will say today that's worthwhile with for sure inspire your action in your first child. I'll be getting my first now. I was binge watching a whole bunch of Dr. Umar Johnson speeches. Not only Umar Johnson, but Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey has a quote where he says, um, everything you do today that is worthwhile will inspire others to act at some future time. Sometimes I speak and I feel like it ain't my words, like I'm just a vessel channeling inside this universe. I feel my ancestors unresting inside of me, like they want me to shoot my chance and change the society. How do I go about it? Tell me where I start. My destiny rewrited when I chose to follow heart. You know, I've always been wanting to do music, but when I was going to high school, I had a musical partner that I made music with. We knew our past was going to separate because we wouldn't get accepted into the same high school. So we decided to uh, pursue different dreams, you know what I mean? So he pursued football, I went to pursue acting. But I knew that if I chased music, then, you know, school would start to decline, the acting thing would start to decline because I had to keep my grades up for that. And um, I was just like, yo, fuck it. Like, this is my now and never moment right now. Like, you know, that's when my destiny rerouted. You taught to follow suit, but tell me what to do for you, except where you down, now you trapped inside the cubicle, they built false. The first step in the change is to take notice, realize the real gains that they try to show us. 300 plus years of them cold shoulders, yet 300 million of us still got no focus. Sorry, America, but I will not be your soldier. Obama just wasn't enough, I need some more closure. And Donald Trump is not equipped to take this country over. Let's face facts, cause we know what's the real motives. <laughs> Damn, Obama is out of presidency. I guess I could finally talk about this. Putting President Barack Obama in office for black people was of course a good thing, but you know, what it did to us, you know, our political selves, our, our just, you know, it put us to sleep because a lot of black people was like, okay, my president is black. <laughs> Let me turn my back. You know what I'm saying? Let me not worry about what's going on over there. You know what I'm saying? And not only that, it was almost like, look, you got a black president now. You ain't got nothing else to worry about. But still, it's still racism in America. It's still systematic prejudice. It's still stereotypes existing all over the country. You know, I won't be fooled. Just because you gave me a black president don't mean that, you know, all our problems is resolved. Don't mean that our history is erased. That's how I feel about it, you know, and Donald Trump line is self-explanatory. <laughs> In the land of the free is full of free lotus. Leave us dead in the street to be their organ donors. They disorganized my people, made us so alone. Still got the last names of our slave owners. My last name is Scott. You know what I mean? I Googled Scott. It's a Scottish name. And so that's, that comes from a type of Scottish slave owner somewhere down the line in my family bloodline. You know what I mean? That ain't my real family name. I know that. I Google my other family name, which is Virginie. That's a French name. You know what I'm saying? So that comes from a French slave owner. And it makes sense because my mom's side of my family is from St. Lucia. They speak broken French. You know what I mean? So that shit opened my eyes like crazy. I'm like, damn, we still got the last names of our slave owners. 
trickery in the system, put my niggas in prison, all our history hidden, ain't no liberty given, we all fit the description of what the documents written. You know, the ghettos are not just bad because they're bad, they're bad because they have no other options. You ever look at a project, and this is something I got from the OG Riz in his book, you look at the projects, you know, everything is right there so those people don't gotta leave. That's how they call it a project experiment. You got the projects, you got the laundromat across the street, you got the school down the block, you got the corner stores, you got the grocery store right there too. And then you know what else? You know what completes the whole shit? You got the prison. You got the prison, the precinct right there. You know what I mean? So we've been lacking the vision and barely making a living. We too worried to fit in while they been benefiting. Every time you submit it, we all get to your minute. The low won't get you acquitted, but you still ask for forgiveness. Put open years to syringes, then the jack is religion. Now, I can't remember whose quote this is, but I'm going to go with Karl Marx. And the quote reads, religion is the opiate of the people. One of the most like prominent convos that I've ever had with my mom was when I was about like seven or eight eight years old and we just driving through like my neighborhood. I was in the back seat. She's driving, just me and my mom in the car. We driving past a whole bunch of different churches. You know how Brooklyn is. You got the Pentecostal church head and the Catholic church head. And so I just asked my mom, I'm like, what religion are we? Because you know, I know I got the girl with the job in my class. You know what I'm saying? I got, I'm trying to figure out what are we? And my mom told me the best thing she she, she could have possibly told me. She said, we're non-denomination. That means we don't have a religion, but we believe in God. And that kept my mind open at an at a early age. Not many times I got to tell you I'm a man in a mission. Many times I got to tell you I don't need no permission. A human with supervision ain't no living condition. I'm reaching out to my children just hoping that they will listen. Start a new coalition against corrupt politicians. There's not enough pot to piss in too many murder convictions. Not the family evicted, not the black man a victim. That's as real as it's getting. You should take recognition. I think the first thing that we can do is going to the United Nations and presenting our problems for the, to the world. We can't present our problems in front of this country because this country knows what it has done to us.